Okay. Uh, Trevor Flowers wants to know about infrastructure, infrastructure in terms of the ordering. How do you stay on top of ordering everything that needs ordering? Is there a place where people make a note when they are running low uh, on some material or hardware? Who does the work of putting in the orders so that the in-shop hardware store never runs out? It's me. Uh, yeah. And I have a, like, I am so, un I'm so afraid of running out of stuff that it's almost a pathology with me. So I am, all, your 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 uh, assumption that someone might be making a note is absolutely true. As I go through my drill bit sorters, by the way, so I have cabinets for all my drill bits, and I have, in some cases, like 40 of the same bit. Um, and this is the kind of thing that in an industrial shop that goes through a lot of expendables would have. Uh, the containers are called Siot, I believe, is the C-I-O-T is the name of the brand. Uh, and I've got them for my drill bits all the way from a 32nd of an inch up to two inches, and then for my taps, reamers, and end mills. And when I am like getting a drill bit, let's say I'm drilling a 440 hole, a four, drilling for a 440 tap, I'm grabbing a number 42. That is one of my most regular drill bits I go for is the number 42. And if I look into the number 42 bin and there's only three drill bits there, I order 10 more. Uh, when I am low enough to count at a glance for drill bits, that's when I order more of that drill bit. Uh, for belt, for sanding belts, I have both a 36 and 72 inch, uh, two inch belt sanders. And I have what I feel like is a lifetime supply of belts for those two things. But just the other day, I realized that I was all out of low uh, grit, like 150, 100 grit belts for them. Um, and in order to make sure I know where I'm at, I'm actually gonna have to pull all the belts out of the like seven hooks they're all hanging from and really chronicle them, list them out, and figure out what I have. That is, a, again, another frequently overlooked part of shop infrastructure, but you got to do it from time to time. Um, I'm working up the, the, uh, the wherewithal to go through all of my belts, because there's probably like 50 sanding belts there. Yeah, I'm, it's problematic. Um, I do make lists. I make lists on, I often make lists when I'm cleaning up because that's when I'm remembering, oh, right, I'm almost out of Sharpies. Oh yeah, I'm almost out of those, like those things. Um, so I'll make notes. Sometimes I'll make notes on my hand. Sometimes, I mean, you know, having Amazon on the phone or eBay is really great because frequently I'll notice something's missing and I'll just immediately put it in the shopping cart. Um, Look, how much you keep on hand is also always a function of how much space you have to keep stuff on hand. Uh, I try not to have, I try to have a place for every expendable that gets replaced. And recently, uh, I just added uh, a, a, a little sorter bin for pipe cleaners, Q-tips, small popsicle sticks, skewers, regular Q-tips, tongue depressors, and acid brushes. Those things are stuff I use constantly, and I was always going to the bin where those were. I ended up making two sorters for them that go in two different parts of the shop. Um, and that's the other thing. I have different expendables containers depending on what, what tool I'm working with, but uh, yeah. It all redounds to, to this guy. I haven't had a shop assistant since before COVID. Um, Freddie, uh, Freddie came in uh, recently. Uh, our, old, our old friend Freddie uh, came in and did some organization for me because he really knows this space. But as far as regular help, yeah, it is all just yours truly. Um, Mr. Mobius 2011 wants to know, how do you decide which storage systems to use, like Sortimo versus average boxes, so you don't have a hodgepodge of different boxes that never quite seem to match. Um, you know, ha having used a bunch of different, like, regular sorters, like, uh, like these by Artbin, um, I like these. These are great, and I have, I, my, you know, I, these help me slay the dragon of my Lego collection, and they are perfect for that. Um, this type of milky plastic is not the most durable of plastics. It does not, like you drop it, it can shatter. Uh, and for that reason, 
Uh, I'm sparing about how I use these for shop infrastructure. I don't use them for stuff I'm going to all the time. I use them more for things like leather chemicals. Uh, let's see, leatherwork chemicals. I have three bins for those. Uh, hat maintenance stuff. Handles and drawer pulls. Yeah, I mean, these are stuff I go to like twice a year. And so those are perfect for that. Someone's at the door. As soon as I saw the Sortimo system, and uh, just to for due diligence, I will show you that. As soon as I saw the Sortimo system, um, I saw a crazy durable thing that was really worth investing in. Um, the, the build quality of this was apparent immediately. So I decided at that moment in time, and this is now uh, 10 years ago, to invest. And it's not cheap. I mean, these, these, these sort of mo tea boxes are about 50 bucks a piece. Um, but I was, I had a television show. I was able to invest in that. And that made a lot of sense and still continues to, um, that being said, <laughs> I still have a hodgepodge of boxes all over the place. I mean, I'm working on a I'm working on a, a metal buildup of a Kylo Ren saber, and I don't have anywhere else to put it except for this custom foam core box because of the size that it is and the way I want to hold these materials in reference to each other. So the fact is, is <clears throat> you never slay the dragon entirely of storage. You momentarily put them on their back feet while you continue to sort things out. But there's always going to be more categories then there are spaces for them. Um, I had enough experience with shop storage when I saw the first Sortimo box 10 years ago to know that I was looking at a remarkable solution. And I mean, that's one of the other ones is just try everything that's interesting. Um, old sorting boxes are something that shows up at garage sales all the time, uh, shows up on eBay. Uh, you can grab stuff and just try it out and see how it works for you. But again, every, like <clears throat> every the, 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 this should start with every shop discussion. Every shop is an externalization of a philosophy of how to work. And that philosophy is either coming from the person that runs that shop or the group of people that utilize that shop. Um, and so this solution worked for me because of the particular way in which my brain operated, but your results may vary. Um, a good starting point is to start cheap. Uh, I don't think the art bin boxes are that expensive. And again, they're terrific, especially for uh, low iteration use. Um, you need to be a little more careful with them than with, let's say, uh, some of the more uh, industrialized options, but that's why also they're less expensive. Um, I'm a big believer in starting with the cheapest solution that you can get the, you know, the ball through the goal with and then build up from there. Uh, let's see here. What else do we have? Oh, we have a bunch of new questions. Um, <laughs> Bertrand Leroy says, can you describe your compressed air infrastructure? It's, it's not amazing, but uh, how do you deal with noise, especially when filming? Where are the hoses, manifolds, et cetera? So uh, five foot tall compressor, way over in the opposite corner of the shop is like as far from here as I can get it. And uh, it is built into a soundproof plywood box. So when it kicks in, we have had to wait for like specific audio pieces to camera, but besides that, it's not that big a deal. Um, I don't like listening to compressors. So it is always a thing to put a compressor in a soundproof box. If you do though, you have to make sure you have access to the parts of the compressor you need to regularly service. For instance, if you're using a compressor, as it compresses uh, the air in the room into its tank, it is also creating a lot of water because it's pulling water out of the air. Uh, so you need to be able to have access to the drain of your compressor. You need to be able to put something under that drain so when you open it and all that gunk comes out, it doesn't just run on the floor. I have that. I have a, It sits up on a riser so I can slip a bucket underneath. Um, and then, um, look, if I had my real druthers, I'd be running pressurized like copper pipe or schedule 40 pipe all the way from the compressor out here into the shop. And I'd have, uh, taps to that. I've never gotten around to doing it here. I did it once at M the original M seven shop. When I set, when I helped to set that up, we did that shop infrastructure with PVC pipe. 
And that is a terrible idea. Don't use PVC pipe for your compressed air distribution. Don't do it, it shatters. So what can happen is, yeah, you could end up with this beautiful manifold that runs all on your shop and you did it all in a day and it didn't cost that much because you're gluing PVC together. And then uh, a year later, your shop air is sitting there at 105 PSI and something large falls against the PVC pipe and PVC pipe shatters when it endures a, a heavy concussive load, uh, you have a mini explosion in your shop. I mean, it's not gonna take out a wall, but it absolutely creates shrapnel that is very dangerous. You don't wanna do it. Please I, I, don't use PVC for your air manifold. At the at the bare minimum, you schedule 40 pipe uh, with the, with all the proper fittings. Uh, I've also seen people do it with sweated uh, half-inch copper lines that all went out to taps. And again, I would love to do that here. I've just never gotten around to that project because it's a long throw. What I have is literally flexible air couplings going all the way from the compressor to a large manifold here up above my drill press, which distributes out to the other tools. So it's all... It's all air lines, it's all flexible rubber lines. It's not a great way to distribute your air. Um, it is a little hard to maintain, but again, the alternative would take me like a couple of full days of work to get right, uh, so I've never gotten around to it. <laughs> I wish I had a better answer to that question. Mm -hmm.